Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're in our, our, our turning workshop, um, and we are going to do. Um, a, we're looking at the the pen starter package, um, which at the moment is on a on a really nice little offer. Um, over the Christmas period, um, we we've got a really great offer on this um, on this little package. I'm going to show you a couple of the bits that come in it. We're going to go through the box and um, and you know see have a look at its contents, and um, we're going to use a load of them today. Um, again, um, we have Craig on on our cameras today um, and on questions. So any questions you have, and I know there's loads of pen turners out there. Um, any questions you have, uh, please pop them in the in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer. Um, you know, as as we go. Okay. So let's come over to the bench over here. I want to show you what's what we get in the box. Um, so this is the um, the pen turning starter package. Um, let's have a look, look inside. Okay, so in here we've got our mandrel. This is a really important bit. Um, that's our pen mandrel. That's how we hold the workpiece on the lathe. We've got a, a long series um, seven mil uh, drill bit and a, a barrel trimmer in here. Now, if we just dig in a little bit deeper into our box here, this is all the little bits that we're going to use today. And I, oh, I've already raided this one. <laughs> so I nearly dropped the lot then. I've already raided this one, but in here we get four pen kits. So we got um, a variation on kits. And like I say, I have raided this already. Um, and you get two acrylic blanks and then two of these um, kind of American walnut blanks. Uh, really nice timber to turn. You can see I've already made a little cut on this because we're going to go through some prep. Uh, we're going to show you how all the little things we're, we're getting uh, from this box kind of work in conjunction with one another. So let's just tuck that to one side for now. I've got the bits I need. I've got my um, my mandrel ready on the lathe. I've got my um, my barrel trimmer. Let's keep one of those kits. We're going to need one of those, and just tuck the rest away for now. Um, so pen turning. This is how I kind of got introduced to wood turning. It's a lovely, um, a lovely way to get started. Really nice and safe. Um, yeah, this, this, so this is how I got started with my with my wood turning. Um, I've already prepped one set of these um, these blanks. Um, that's been glued, and everything's been done to that already. So we've got our brass tubes um, already glued inside. So they're ready to go. Um, what I do want to show you is how this um, this drill bit works, and I want to show you a, you know a bit of a closer look at this. This is a really good quality drill bit. Um, you know, different to your kind of standard drill bits. This has a really kind of steep angle on the flutes here, and a really deep kind of a, a flute. And what that does is um, pulls the waste out really efficiently. Um, especially important on your kind of acrylics and polyesters where sometimes they can get jammed in the flutes when when drilling um, so a really nice thing extra long as well so we can get um you know right through those kind of single piece pens if we wanted to um, but this is the fish um uh, pen drill bit uh, it's a long series and it has these deep flutes a kind of a lip and spur type um tip to it and that is what I've got set up in my um, in my pillar drill. So our first job when we get our pen kit is to take those brass tubes out out of the packet. They'll come in your um, in your kit, and then we need to drill our blanks and um, and glue those tubes in. Okay, so. Just coming across onto the, the pillar drill here. So I've um, got the pillar drill set. 
I've also got my um, my pen blank centering vise. This is a really nice, neat piece of kit as well. It's got almost a kind of scissor action on the jaws. We haven't got one fixed jaw and one that comes up to meet it. And what that means is everything centers. So we can get this set up against our fence. We've got the UJK table on here as well. So we've got all the gadgets um, and a little kind of flip stop on there as well. And what that helps me to do is just relocate that um, pen blank centering vise every time so I can just keep going and going with the drilling. Um, and quite often people making pens will do 10, 50 at a time, um, you know, because it pays because everything's already set up. You can set up your jigs and your fences and then you're just blasting through them. So a really nice um, kind of easy, um, repeatable way to, to work. So we're going to be using the drill. So um, goggles on. I've got my pencil here. And what I'm going to do is just roughly mark center on both of these blanks with a, with a pencil. You don't have to get it bang on. Um, although I know there's some people that are really into that kind of precision. Um, adjustable jaw on this one as well. So we can just pull that back. This is slightly bigger than the last blank I put in. So adjusting the jaw is not going to change where it's held. It's still going to hit center if we want it to. Now, we could, with our UJK table, um, put in a little hold down clamp to hold this, make it even safer. And if you've got kids who want to get involved and stuff like that, um, you know, do that. Um, I'm fairly happy with holding up against that fence with my little kick stop there. Um, that is not going to twist and move. But certainly if you're just on the um, on the, the table of the pillar drill, make sure you get that clamped. Good. So just going to bring that little spur off the drill bit down on my um, center mark. And actually... There is a little adjustment to make, but easy to do on this fence. Like I say, slightly bigger blank than what we were using earlier. So it just means I need to make a little adjustment, undo the little nut on the back there, and that allows that just to go back a bit further. So drilling. That um, drill bit's doing a great job of clearing the swarf. I'm just backing up halfway through the um, operation just to clear the swarf if there is any bound in there. And then I'm going to do it again. And then I can feel that's gone right the way through. I should say as well that we've set the depth on the drill bit. So when we come right the way down, full travel is not going to bite into that, um, into that vice. So that's it, drill in, really quick and easy. And if I bring it back over onto the, um, the table there, you can see we've got a really nice kind of central hole right the way through, nice and clean on entry and exit, okay? So that kind of lip and spur type um, drill bit will control the way the, the um, drill breaks out the bottom or, or cuts through the bottom. We've got another one to do here. And because that's all set, we just pop it straight back into that centering vise. And away it goes. This is a really nice, soft, forgiving timber. Um, but if you've got something a bit waxy, perhaps you're doing a bit of um, olive or, or something like that, um, definitely back off that cut a couple of times. We don't want that um, the kind of oil in the wood or the resins to kind of build up and become sticky through through the through the heat of um, friction and um, and binds on the drill bit. Good. So we've got our two bits drilled. Um, you would then just glue those um, those tubes in that come in the pack. Um, and then we're at this stage. Um, the glue I like to use is um, this Z epoxy. Okay. So again, let's just have a little peek down on here. This is um, Z epoxy uh, Zap Gap. 
it's um a really good good stuff this is the five minute one because we're only doing you know one or two pens today um if you're doing them in a production line i would definitely recommend the 30 minute um, and that gives you that extra open time. So you can mix a whole bunch of this up and just keep gluing and gluing um, until you've got all your um, your pen blanks or projects ready. Good. That's the one I recommend over a super glue. Um, it's got a little bit of give, a little bit of, um, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving than the, um, than the super glue. It tends to shatter that super glue. Okay, so the other thing we get in the box is a barrel trimmer. And I've got one set in the drill already. Okay, so there's your barrel trimmer. And let's just take that out and have a proper look at it. So we've got um, a little um, kind of shaft on which this cutter sits. Okay, and this is really important that we square off the faces when we um, come to put these on the mandrel. Um, because if we have gone off a little, um, you know, the wrong direction potentially when we're, we're drilling or we've, um, you know, perhaps the drill bits drifted off um, through the blank, um, this gives us a chance to get that 90 degree face back on because we're, we're following the um, that straight shaft. So, all I would do with this is hold that in the vise and we're going to put that shaft down through our brass tube and then we're going to go full speed on the drill and we're just going to drop onto our um, project. That's good. So not much to come off that front face. You can see um, we've just revealed that little bit of brass. We've just trimmed off the end of it. And you can see where it's kind of cleared off the glue. We're back to the bare timber. We could do the same the other side. I'm using the kind of weight of the drill. To, um, apply the pressure on the cut we don't want to push down too hard because this will cut brass as well and you'll end up with a slightly shorter um, project blank so that's trimming um, you could also do that on um, on a disc sander or if you've got your little disc set up on the back of your um, um, your dovetail ring then that's going to work really well as well so after everything's trimmed and ready, we're, um, we've got our blank ready to go and mount on the lathe. Okay, so we've got our um, mandrel. This again is the compression mandrel, really nice bit of kit. And um, we're gonna pop this on the lathe. I've got my blanks there. And this comes in two pieces. So we've got the drive. So here's our drive. This one's fixed and this whole part spins together, okay? That's gonna go up into our headstock. So let's move our tool rest back and we're gonna kind of jam it in there, okay? So we've got that good grip on it. If I pull it back this way, it's not gonna easily just come out. Likewise on the tailstock, let's bring that along. Our live center. So this one spins with the project um, and it's got that bearing in, so it spins with it. So again, we want to kind of jam it into that two morse taper, and that's not coming back out. I always tend to test these, give it a little pull against the way it's kind of jammed in, um, and then we know we've got a good grip. Sometimes you can auto eject on these um, on these lathes, and that's not going to grip there. So we need to make sure we've got our quill. This part that's, um, that extends out of the tailstock, we've got that extended enough that that two morse taper is going to grab. Good. Now, next part. Um, let's just quickly go over bushings. You, you know, if you do pen, you'll be familiar with bushings. But these bushings um, represent the size of the pen that we're going to do. Okay. 
and you can see the little round on there. Um, so that diameter is very important. If I grab a pen kit here, so this is our kit, and I'm going to go for um, the, the kind of components of the pen that are doing all the kind of holding the pen together. So in here I've got um, the nib, I've got a little decorative ring, and what they call the end cap. So let's get in our bag here. We'll look at this, we'll keep that, because you want to keep your stuff all together when we're, um, when we're looking at pens. It is really easy to lose these. Um, especially in a in a workshop full of shavings. Oh, and there we go. Tempted fate. Okay, so there's our bushing. And that piece there is the center ring, the decorative ring that you get on the um, on the pen. And if we hold them together, you can see they're the, exactly the same diameter. Okay, so same diameter right the way through, um, internal and external. Okay, and the same is true for that end cap, same size, and the nib. Whoops, sorry, I got butter fingers today. <laughs> so you can see that they all match up. And when we get to turning, these little bushings are going to represent these parts of the pen. And so when we turn our blank down to this size and this size, um, everything's going to flow together when we, um, when we assemble the pen. Okay, so we've got our first question. Yes, then, got our first question. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Um, Martin's asked, the, the drill table, UJK drill table, mm -hmm. does it fit on the Craft 315 PD? Now, underneath the table, oops, excuse me, underneath the table here, we've got a couple of um, kind of toggle hold-down clamps that are holding it on. I've got a feeling that table might be a bit too small. OK, so the, the way this grips on, um, but that's not to say we could um, we could potentially grab another piece of wood on top of that drill table and then clamp this to that. Um, as long as everything's really solid and there's no movement between the two, um, you can still benefit from something like this. Um, um, and if you're handy with a router, we've got these T slots you can get um, separately um, and and route that dovetail shape in and um, and slip one of those um, those T slots in. So there are options, um, but I don't think that's straight out of the box. That's not going to grip on the table. The the table on the on the craft um, pillar drill is just that little bit too small. Okay. But a really serious good bit of kit that we use it a lot. It's got an extraction port on the back. Um, you know, and that is not to be kind of underestimated. It is brilliant being able to drill a lot of stuff and all that waste is going out of the back. It's not getting stuck along the back of the fence there. A great bit of kit. Highly recommend that one. So we're back to our uh, pen kit, our blank, sorry. So we've glued those in. We've trimmed the edge ends. And I did that with a sander. I cheated. Okay. And I've always done it like that. Um, those barrel trimmers come in useful when the when the um, drilling goes <laughs> goes a bit wrong. Okay, so they can get you out of a kind of sticky situation um, if, instead of offering these up at an awkward angle to the sanding table or the sanding disc. So we know that these diameters here on these bushings are the same as our components on our pen. So we can clamp our two. Um, blanks on there. I don't know if you can see, but we've got a pencil line that runs straight across the blanks. Um, and that's the indicator I put on this when I cut it. So I can reorientate these blanks together. So any kind of grain that's running through the pen kind of remains there when it's a, when it's a finished, the finished article. Um, particularly important if you've got you know, dark lines running through the pen that they extend right up into the next um, next part of the pen. Okay, so you want that grain to flow. Okay, so tailstock comes up. That tailstock center is what's going to give us the pressure to kind of grab this. So as I wind on that back handle, let's make sure we're clamped down with that tailstock. As I wind, wind this one, 
is putting pressure on here and not on the back of the mandrel, which, which some um, pen mandrels do. We're bringing our tool rest in nice and close. Just setting it to the right height, which is just below center, about six mil below center. And I'm gonna use my roughing gouge. Okay, nice big um, wide steel on the roughing gouge, and this is just the Axminster wood turning, the kind of um, a cheaper set, I guess. It comes in a nice box, or affordable is the right word. <laughs> okay, so we've got another question. I've got a question for me, I'm afraid, Ben. Okay. Sorry to steal your show. Question <laughs> oh, lovely. from Maria in Wales. Hello, Maria. Hope you are well. Um, question for Craig. Do you know if the bandsaw rip fence upgrade will fit a record BS? 350s bandsaw. The answer to that is yes. You've got a fairly thick cast iron table on the BS350 record, um, and this kind of there's two brackets that mount to the front of that cast iron table. You might have to drill a couple of holes and bolt through, but cast iron is easy to drill. So yeah, the answer is yes. Either of the, um, the the larger, I think it's one for about 130 quid, one for about 180 quid, but they do make a big difference getting a good solid fence on your on your bandsaw. So yes, is the answer. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Craig. All these little upgrades and things that you can get out there now are fantastic. Um, you know, if you're struggling with a fence that's a bit sloppy or it's kind of lost its bite, um, a, you know, great little um, additions to these things. Um, there's loads of cool stuff, um, especially on the UJK. You know, check out the UJK stuff. OK, so another question. Yeah, Jim B's asked, do you ever use a skew to do your pens? I do. Yeah, I do use a skew. Um, and we're going to be using the skew. I was just checking that one was nice and sharp, and it's all right. So we're going to use the skew in a bit. Um, I guess, you know, potentially the other guys would use different tools to me. I, when I see Colwyn and Jason, um, you know, if they're turning pens, they'll rough down with a bowl gouge. Um I use the the roughing gouge because I I just find it easier to use. Um, I'm not a kind of full time turner like those guys. Um, so this is my kind of go to. I get my rough shape. We bring it right down with the with the um, with the roughing gouge, and I find I can get a really nice finish off of this anyway. So I'm not um, you know although it is a roughing gouge, there are ways that we can um, we can get a nice finish using this tool. So new project on the lathe. I've turned my speed right down um, and we're going to be turning this around about 2000 RPM. So it's quite fast. The, um, the kind of smaller the project, the, um, so let's just, excuse me, just um, plug the lathe in there. Always a good one. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, sorry, me again. No, just go for it. on with drilling <laughs> yeah, off cast sure. iron. Yeah, drilling off cast iron is really um, surprisingly easy. Put yourself a pilot. What I do is centre punch, so you get a little uh, did it really a little point for your drill bit to start. If you're drilling an eight mil hole, I go straight in with a four mil um, regular high speed steel drill, slow and steady. No need, in my opinion, for any lubricant or wax of any description. Straight in with the four mil and then straight on through with an eight mil. Um, not too fast with the drill speed, the slower speed on your cordless, and cordless is fine. Cast iron, although it's kind of a, a you know, cast iron, super tough, um, it's surprisingly easy to drill. So uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Lovely. Thank you very much. Isn't it great to have, have all this knowledge um, at your fingertips? So I'm going to crank the speed up on this 2000 RPM, like we said. Um, you could turn these two to three. Um, I like to keep it down at that 2000 RPM. And I think I'm going to chuck the extractor on for this one. So, roughing gouge up on the tool rest here. I'm going to use the back of the tool rest to keep everything nice and straight. And you can see where I'm gripping this chisel. It's not on the handle down here. I'm one hand's up on the steel. And the other one is just on the on the back here. So nice sharp gouge. It should cut 
really easy and I'm just going back and forth. So that's just stopping. That means I need to put a little bit more pressure on this way. So a little wind of that tail stop. And you can see how quick we can whiz this off. Now I've done a few of these pens in my time um, and I always have one end that's nice and straight along the pen because we're going to put a clip on this end. I'm imagining the pen kind of facing into the headstock like that. So what I'm turning here is this back piece and this front one I'm going to put a little shape on, a little kind of teardrop shape which I like, it kind of gives it a bit more chunkiness on the grip. So this is a two-part pen, we've got two barrels. Some of these pens have a single barrel. Um, and that way you can fit two at a time on the lathe, on the mandrel at least and really turn into a little production line. The um, Venetian is one I really like. That's a single barrel and I, whenever I'm doing them, um, I generally put two, um, two on the mandrel at the same time. Okay, so we're, we're nearly at our bushings here. I'm being really careful how I touch this. Nowhere near the, our um, tool rest here. We don't want to get our fingers trapped in between. And I'm doing almost like a little bell shape or a teardrop shape. Taking cuts from here and just working that down. Kind of concentrating on this end. And we want that a nice kind of gradual drop off. A nice taper. A little bit more off of the um, the diameter here. I don't want to make it too chunky and uncomfortable to hold. And you can always test this. You know, put your hand in there, sort of think, is that a big enough grip? Do I want to take a little bit more off? I think I want to take a, just a touch more off. Just blending that hard edge in blending it into that taper and I've got a little flare up on here so I'm just going to take some tiny little cuts and we're still roughing although we're only taking tiny amounts off this is still a roughing cut we're still shaping now I'm going to turn my um, roughing gouge up on edge here and I'm also going to bring in a bit, little bit of an angle and just hold it on that corner and that's given us a nice little kind of chamfer there too. Gently blend that in. Now we're really close down to our bushings now. We've got probably a millimeter, half a millimeter. Um, so I want to show you a little kind of finishing cut that you can do with this roughing gouge. And I'm going to rest on the bevel there. I'm going to just lift the handle until we see a tiny bit of dust. And that's your cut. This is a bevel rubbing kind of finishing cut. And let's just have a little look see. Probably not obvious on camera. You can see this one's just slightly more reflective than this one, um, where we've used that kind of finishing cut on it. Okay. If you wanted to practice with your skew, this is a great time to do it. I would usually leave a little bit more material on the um, on the pen for practice, but you know, for that um, that planing cut, pens are really great practice. So I'm just holding the chisel at kind of 45 degrees to the project and twisting it up on its spine or the kind of the the back of the, the chisel and just get that bevel rubbing 
and we can just gently come across using our tool rest as a guide and that's your kind of planing cut like I said there's not much more material to come off of this so I'm just being a little bit gentle as I go another thing that's great for the skew especially on the acrylics not so much on the timbers is to use it as a scraper which we're going to do up on this kind of top end you'll see some people aren't so keen on using scrapers and things but for me it's whatever gets the job done so this time using it flat on the tool rest no twist in it at all and we're just swinging the handle side to side and that's going to give us a really nice gentle curve that point is really useful to get right down where the um the timbers meeting the the bushing and i'm still kind of searching for my perfect shape pen I've just recently started to have a more of a gentle taper there. But you can turn these however you want, whatever shape you want. If you like mega chunky pens, you can do that. Um, just a couple of considerations to make is where that clip's gonna sit, okay? Using the heel now to get in nice and close to that bushing. And I'm just gonna do a really gentle little planing cut because I've used the heels just made a little line there so I just want to blend in having a little feel And also if you've got any little high spots that kind of flat of the skew or this kind of scraping type uh, motion will um, will knock off those flat spots uh, high spots I should say good so we're kind of happy with the overall shape of this um, I'm gonna pop my skew to one side and we've got another question let me just whack the extractor off Another question, Ben. Um, Jim B's asked, why are you not using the, the tray blade? And it's maybe been suggested that because the, the, the craft pen kit is designed for the hobbyist. Uh, yeah. That's why you're using the craft lathe. And yeah, the craft I shippers. guess so. But they're all interchangeable, right? Absolutely. Use whatever you've got. Um, you know, the, the lathe's not going to matter what, what you know, what lathe, lathe you've got. Um, I like these. These are kind of my size of lathe. Um, you know, I'm not doing the big bowls or the big hollow forms. I don't need that power, um, which the guys need um, to, you know, to turn those big open vessels and things. I'm not doing anything big. So this kind of suits my needs. Um, it's got a smaller footprint. Uh, I'm just, uh, I, I always drag this little uh, craft one over when I'm doing pens. Um, we push out the trade one. <laughs> and leave that to the big boys <laughs> i think to be honest we got six different lathes in here we could choose from but yeah i mean we're spoiled for choice we're uh, absolutely spoiled rotten in here we've got all the trade all the craft lathes i kind of think this suits the project it suits the size of the project um it holds it really nicely um and as you, we've got all the speed there we don't like i say we don't need that big big two horse you know horsepower motor um, we can use something a little bit um, user friend, not user friendly. The big lathes are lovely to use as well, and and actually, you know, all the bells and whistles on it are probably that little bit better. But this is doing a great job. You know, it's, it's I'm not um, kind of reaching for um, the, the the big lathe. Um, I've just dragged this over, and because because I, I like using it, it's a nice nice little bit of kit. Is it just because red's a bit more of a festive colour? That's right, it's Christmas. We're it is. <laughs> setting oh, up with oh, Christmas. Oh. 
That's it. <laughs> and actually, the the pen that I turned, uh, the one that we've already done out of this kit, has got a really nice little red um, blank um, with some lovely swirls going through it. Lovely little festive thing. And these, um, you know, let's not forget how great a gift a pen is. Um, you know, a handmade something, whatever it is, is always a lovely gift. Um, something that's functional and, and, you know, they can use, they can take to work and stick on their desk. Um, it's going to be a little reminder of, uh, of you. Um, so a, a really nice and thoughtful gift as well. Okay. Ben, Maria said um, when she goes right down to finishing a pen with a roughing gouge, sometimes the wood splits on the tube. Mm -hmm. Is this the glue, the gouge, or her? Um, so sometimes um, just try that little bevel rubbing technique with the um, with the roughing gouge. Um, it can be quite a wide contact with the um, the cutting edge to the the piece of timber. It could also be uh, where the glue's going in. There could be little voids where the glue hasn't quite um, kind of um, you know taken to to the timber or the tube. Um, so it could be that there's a little kind of um, air pocket in there. Um, and quite often you can cut through to that. It could be a little bit on the drilling as well. Um, if the, the drill has kind of rattled at all, um, that will also give a little void inside. Um, so it could be it could be lots of things. Um, usually uh, with a roughing gouge, it's a little bit too aggressive. So try that bevel rubbing technique where you're just rubbing the bevel, you're not cutting at all, and just lifting the handle ever so slightly until we um, we get a cut. And let's have a little another look at that, Craig. Let's have a little recap. So let's come back onto the lathe. I'm putting my let's drop that tool rest a touch because we're still in kind of um, skew skew position. Um, so roughing gouge on the on the tool rest, nice and um, solid. We're putting that bevel on, so that is in contact with the timber. We're not cutting anything. That's just rubbing. And then as you lift the handle, you just see that little tiny bit of dust. And that'll give you a really nice cut. And it's trying to maintain that same angle right the way along the blank. Okay, so. You can get a bevel rubbing finishing cut. Just nice and gentle with it. Don't go too um, too aggressive and try and take off too much. It is always this, it's a real pain actually. The last little, it's always the last little bits in it when you, um, you've done all the hard work, you've done the prep, you've done most of the turning and then you've got the last finishing touches and it, and it throws up a surprise. Okay, so another question. Clive's uh, asked, could it be the tension applied onto the mandrel? It shouldn't be. Um, what for the cracking and um, and stuff? It shouldn't really be the the um, you know that's on the brass tubes. If it hasn't been trimmed properly, so the um, the material whatever it is, acrylic, polyester, um, timber, um, if that's not been trimmed properly and there's a little overhang, sometimes when we apply pressure through these um, compression mandrels that will kind of just kick up that little overhang and, and kind of sometimes it will split back into the body, but make sure it's trimmed right back to that, um, that brass tube. Because um, all the pressure here on these um, bushings is pretty much on that brass tube. And a cylinder is a really strong shape um, when you're putting pressure on it that way. Okay. Robert has asked, um, what glue are you using on the tubes? He used to use CA glue, but now uses a two-part epoxy, and he finds it better. Yeah, absolutely, a two-part epoxy. Um, so we just showed that earlier. This is um, a Z epoxy. It's different to your kind of, um, you know, the kind of um, pouring epoxies. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, really good product, though, this. I've used this on loads. I'm not a fan of super glue. I never have been. Um, after a little accident, um, sticking myself to something, uh, it put me off for life. So this is really cool stuff. Um, and it, like we say, it has that, um, like it says, it's a tough permanent hold, um, excellent gap filling and shock resistant. That's the key. Um, when we're turning, we're quite often putting a lot of vibration through the thing. Um, and anything that's brittle, like a CA glue, once it's fully cured, um, is just going to kind of shatter through that vibration. 
Okay. Maria's asked, can you show how to sharpen uh, the barrel trimmer? Hers is chewing up the ends of the brass tubes. Okay, so the barrel trimmer. Where have we put the barrel trimmer? So here's the barrel trimmer. Let's do that on the on the bench. I might have to just scuttle away and find an Allen key. Um, but what you want is something like your little diamond card. Or we do um, a little uh, kind of fold away, four-sided one. But that's the kind of thing you want. Um, I don't think I've got my Allen key here. But all you would do is pop that one off. Let me just see if Colwyn's got one. Feeling lucky. Oh, he's a good lad. He's got his Allen keys in place. So this one just pops off. Okay. Sometimes you'll get a bit of gunk and that'll kind of glue it up a little bit. But this should just come off. We've got our little flat spot there, which the um, grub screw or sits on. I've got mine a little bit mucky through. Um, it's got some kind of resin and stuff on there. But you need to take that bit out. Um, and what we're doing, like kind of router cutters and, and things like that, we're actually sharpening that flat. Okay. So you would hold that onto your diamond card or diamond file, whatever you've got. Um, and you're just going to take that back and forth. And again, like a router car, we want to do the similar amount on each of those flat faces. We don't want to... Um, you know, take a load off one because then you've got a low spot on one of them and it's not going to quite, um, you know, quite engage when the rest are all hitting it and that's going to produce a chatter. So diamond card, get your um, barrel trimmer on that flat and just take that back and forth. Okay, so we're actually taking material from the flat to come back up onto this really difficult thing to sharpen that. So, um, yeah, always always go from the flat, give it a little tickle. And like a lot of these things, it's um, you know, it's better to keep it um you know, keep it fairly good than to let it go really blunt and then you're um you know you're up against it then. Um just like your carving knives, carving chisels, always worth to have a little kind of um tweak every now and then. Okay, so that's your barrel trimmer. Right, so back to our pen. Oh, we got another question. Good yeah, stuff. Coming in. Thick and fast. Thanks for that sharpening. Spot okay. On. Um, so does the UJK um, drill table fit the record DP25B? Oh, you're testing us now. No, I, I, sorry. Do you want to go? No, go for it. Take it away, Greg. Um, I think it's a very similar size to our craft ones. Um, the, the, the table on your pillar drill is really quite small. Um, there's always a way to adapt and adjust, so it won't clamp and grip straight on. This is meant for quite substantial larger machines, but most definitely there's always a way just to adapt that clamping underneath. So uh, not directly, but I'm sure it's adaptable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Got another question from Lawrence, Ben. Yeah. Um, which is your favourite pens, resin or wood? I like the wood ones. For sure, I like the wood ones. I like the kind of warm feel of them in your hand. You don't get that same kind of level of uh, glossy finish as you would on the acrylics and polyesters. But I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of kind of glossy things. I like the matte. I like the kind of warmth you get from the timbers. Um. You know, saying that, um, you know, you've got to kind of think about the environment it's going to be in. Is is are you giving this gift to a pen, um, <laughs> this pen as a gift to someone who's always got, I don't know, dirty hands, and they're going to make the, the wooden one kind of um, dirty? It's going to pick up the dirt and those open pores. Um, they might be a mechanic. They might always have oil on their hands. Where those kind of acrylics and polyesters, non-porous, they're not going to take on any of that crud. Um, but the wooden ones will. So it's a little bit of playing to your audience, um, but the actual look and the feel of them in your hand, I prefer the wooden ones, um, you know, nine times out of ten. You know, there is that odd um, acrylic blank that is really nice looking, um, but I just think 
environmentally and things like that as well. I'm all about the wooden ones. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of sanding. We've come off the tooling pretty clean there, so I'm not going to go with any kind of rough abrasive. I'm starting at 400. So quite fine to begin with. Extractor's going on, and I'm going to bring the speed of the lathe just down a touch to around the kind of 1300 mark, and that's going to um, help with the heat. I'm keeping my paper, normally I would fold my paper in two like that, but I'm keeping it a single sheet. So I want to feel that heat coming through. If it's too hot for my finger there, it's definitely too hot for the piece of timber. Actually, I can see a little white line there that's going to annoy me. So I'm dropping back to 240. Always nice to be able to react to something like that if you've got the right abrasives. You know, there's definitely a, a job here that needs a slightly coarser one. We'll whiz over with that. And this, um, I think it's a, an American black walnut. Um, it finishes really nicely. Um, those two blanks in the, the in the starter package. I'm being careful not to drag in any metal dust off of these bushings. So where we're kind of close to those bushings, I'm rolling onto them and not dragging that metal dust in because you will see that. Using a fresh bit of the um, abrasive each time. So again, we're we're limiting any of that kind of metal dust from sneaking into our um, open pores because there's no finish on this at the moment it is just a naked bit of timber so that was my um, my 240 going jumping up a couple of grits to, to 400 again rolling that onto the um, bushings We get a nice finish all the way along. And then um, 600. Let's just have a quick peek, make sure there's nothing. No big scratches, no kind of dents or dinks. We're pretty good. Like I say, this timber does finish really well. Um, some of the darker timbers, your ebony's and things like that, will, will really show any little scratches. This walnut is very forgiving. And it's got a lovely color once you get a finish on as well. Obviously, these are pieces of timber. They're going to be different... Um, you know, package to package. Um, I wonder if I, you can see this on the, yeah, there you go. On the um, abrasive there, you can see where the wood dust is, and then you can see that kind of gray dust as well. That's the metal from the, the bushing. Now, I'm not taking, a, a, you know, a major amount of the diameter off of that bushing, but certainly that abrasive is coming to meet it. How are we doing here? We've got a little bit there I just want to sort out. And, you know, don't rush the finishing touches. Once you get a finish on there, it's a pain in the, um, you know, pain in the behind to have to take the pen apart and put it back on the lathe. We don't want to be doing that. And if you're anything like me, a little scratch or something like that is just will niggle me forever. <laughs> okay, so we've gotten rid of the, most of those scratch patterns um, from those previous timbers. I'm going to whack that extractor off now um, because we don't need that anymore. There's no more dust that's done its job. 
And we're going to get on with a bit of friction polish in just a moment. Okay, so another question. Yeah, firstly, Samantha says, please say hi to Ben from Sam and Paulette. Sam and Paulette, hi. Hello, How are you How doing? Are you? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, all regular customers that we, we've had in here made loads of Windsor chairs and stuff. Hi, Sam and Paulette. How are you doing? And um, Woodwork Learners asked, um, have you tried something like Yorkshire grit to sand it? I've not used a Yorkshire grit. I've used a cut and polish. This is pretty good stuff. Um, so that's the chestnut one. This is um, the, the cut and polish. Nice little product that. It's got an abrasive and um, a kind of wax at the same time. So it's doing a couple of jobs for you. Um, yeah, dust free sanding. Um, so I've used that one a fair bit. I've not used the Yorkshire grit. So something I'm kind of interested in. But to be perfectly honest, we kind of use what we've got around us, the you know the products that we we um, we got to hand, um, and that one's always been available. And this friction polish as well, that's always been a big favourite of mine because um, it get a really nice quick result on on uh, timber, right? Really nice on kind of light pools and things like that. Get a real glossy um, look, but it does fade back. Okay, so another question. Uh, Jim B's asked, are the bushings available separate to the mandrel? They are. You can get replacements ones for these bushings. And, you know, it's important to understand that these bushings are for this pen kit. Okay. Every pen kit will have its own individual set of bushings, um, which, you know, are because these pens come in different diameters, different sizes. Um, so when you get your pen, you know, in that starter package, we've got everything we need for these types of pens, these styles of pens. Um, if you wanted to kind of uh, branch out and have a look at different pens, um, like fountain pens and uh, mechanical pencils, click pens, all that sort of stuff, they tend to have their own bushing set because they're different sized um, components on there. Um, so... And also the drill bits are important. It's really important you've got your right drill bit. These are all 7 mil. All these pens that we're doing today are, are 7 mil. Um, but again, you might have a fountain pen that's got a lid on it, and the lid's going to have a bigger drill bit size than the actual body of the pen. So sometimes you need two drill bits, but you definitely need um, the right set of um, bushings. All right. Um, but yeah. In sorry, I've waffled on a bit. Then you can buy these separately, these sized um, uh, bushings, and they're fairly um, consistent across lots of different kits. So I'm bringing my um, speed back up on the lathe. I was waffling on a bit then, and my friction polish has kind of been drunk into the um, into the bit of tissue. So we want enough of that product on there that it's not just going to soak into our um, our cloth or tissue. Um, and it's important that we're using something that can tear. We don't want, um, you know, an old cotton T-shirt or something that's going to wrap around the lathe. Um, if anything ever does grab when you're doing this sort of operation, just let go of it. Don't try and um, kind of fight the lathe for it. Just let it go, turn the lathe off, and then kind of unravel it. So it's starting to build up that. Um, that shine, I can feel the heat, the friction going through my, um, through the cloth into my fingers. Um, and we want the heat to build a little bit on this one. And that'll give us a lovely finish. And you can already see how kind of reflective that is using a dry bit of that tissue just to buff off any excess. And there we go. Ben, we've got, a, we've got a question from Lawrence. What are the best finishes for pens that need to stand a lot of wear and tear? Wear and tear. I would go with a CA finish for that one. Um, so we're going back to um, super glue. Okay. Um, check out. There's lots of videos on CA finishes. Again, it's not something that I've really got involved with um, because I just don't like super glue. Um, it's just one of those things. Um so check out CA finishes. That is a really long lasting high gloss finish. Um, and it's going to repel any of the kind of mucky bits that potentially this one will, um, will, will slowly dull down to. 
you can see that kind of reflective shine on this pen it's come up really nice um, and a really kind of it's darkened it down it's given it a really nice kind of warm color you can still see um, the little flecks of the grain in there so it's still showing its kind of natural qualities um, but it has got that lovely sheen and um, and that will last you know probably a couple of years under normal use um, and it will soften down and, and dull down okay so how are we doing for time we've got five minutes i think five minutes is enough time to put this pen together I did have a couple of other bits planned, but um, we always get lots of questions uh, when it comes to pens, um, which is which is nice. Okay, let's come back onto our table here. I'll have a little tidy up. Let's just move our drill and I've all the bits I've abandoned on here. We're going to bring in the um, the drill press. I'm being extra careful with that, not to swap ends. So I've held it as it's come off the lathe. Let's get rid of these chisels back up on the rack. Good. So let's go with um, this chrome kit. Um, there's a few kits in here. There's there's four different kits. We have two um, of the artisan uh, pens. That is the pen like this one. Oh, sorry, like this one with the little A logo. Um, and then there's, uh, so you get a, a silver, uh, sorry, a chrome and gold plated one with them. And then we've got two like this, again, gold and chrome with this kind of black stripe across the clip. So I'm gonna use the chrome one with the, um, the stripe across the clip. And first part we're gonna go to is the, um, the kind of business end, the nib of our pen. And these do have a little shoulder on, a little locating shoulder, but you wouldn't be able to push that in by hand. If you've got a bench vise at home, you can always use that to kind of push in that nice controlled, um, slow um, kind of grip. Just adjust my little sled there. And the thing I like about this one is spring loaded here. So it's, once you've put your um, project in, it can become almost a kind of one-handed operation. So nice, nice and easy, that one. So now our um, nibs in, we can put in our um, twist mechanism. And we're going up to a little line on the, on the twist mechanism. There's a little indent just after that brass bit. That's how far we're going to push that in. And important, we put this one in second. If we put that in first up to that line, and then we go to put in our nib, the potential is that we're going to push this bit in even further. So always put the nib in first. I'm going to slide that right back. Let's get that located. Again, we've got a little chamfer or location um, bit on that twist mechanism. And then we're just going to push that over up to and not past that little indent. Nice control on something like this pen press. And we've come up to now it's time to to just check the, um, the, the refills in its right position. So that goes um, through. Again, sometimes they'll just get snagged. So nice and gentle. We can screw that in. And then as we twist that part, you see the nib kind of protract and retract. Good. So that's good. Um, we've got our um, back end of the pen now. So we've got this little clip. This comes with a little protective film on. And if you're all fingers and thumbs like me, I'm going to take a little bit of time to get that off. The um, end cap is just going through there and that is going to go on the back end of the pen there again quickly shuffle that little sliding carriage along we're going to use the nylon jaw to rest our metal component on because this piece of aluminium potentially could scratch it 
and we want to put this on nice and tight. We want that to really shut down onto that clip and stop it from rotating around the pen, potentially again scratching the, the timber. We've got our decorative ring that just slides over the back and then that one kind of completes the pen. So that's a, um, a slim line twist. There's other lovely pens in that kit. We've got um, a gold version of. We've got this lovely um, piece of acrylic with the red and the gold. I think they look really nice, really crispy pen, that one. Um, and I did have another one, which I was going to polish, but we kind of run out of time, folks. We've got this blank here, which is that kind of black swirly blank that also comes in the in the kit. So four lovely pens and all the bits and bobs that you you might need to um, to turn them. So a good little um, good little bit of kit that. And you know, over the Christmas period, it is on special offer. And there's twenty pounds off of that, um, which brings up to about sixty pound. The mandrel itself is fifty pounds, so you're getting all those. The um, you know the barrel trimmer, the the drill bit, uh, four pen kits, four pen blanks uh, for ten pounds, which I think is a, a really good bargain. Um, but that is limited. If you're watching this on playback in the summertime, um, I'm afraid you've missed it. Uh, but thanks again for for joining us for for woodworking wisdom. We we good for questions, Craig. We're all good. So thanks again for, for participating, and hi to our friends uh, back at home. Um, we'll see you again soon for, for more of our woodworking wisdom.